Namaste and welcome to my channel. So we are going to continue our series on facial nerve palsy. In the previous videos we had seen about eye closure and what are the procedures that can be done for the patient. Now this series is going to cover all the aspects of the most important part that is the smile. So how the smile can be managed in patients of facial nerve palsy and what are the treatment options available. So first of all, what are the principles of the smile management in these patients? So first of all, you have to know what the timing of the injury is or what is the duration of the etiology. As they say, timing is everything. So it is important to know this so that we can decide whether the patient is fit for a nerve procedure or whether the patient has to straight away go in for a muscle transfer. So usually a period of 12 months helps to decide the same. So if the injury or the etiology since the palsy has occurred is less than one year, a neural procedure will help the patient. Usually we say that after a period of 24 months, that is two years, for sure that even the facial musculature would have lost its innervation, would have denervated completely. And therefore in those cases, it is important to replace the muscle and only a nerve procedure will not be able to help the patient. So first important point is the timing. After that we have the etiology. So we should obviously know what is the cause of the facial palsy. Whether it was congenital, whether it was traumatic, inflammatory or neoplastic, CTIN. We have to know this because this will tell us whether we have an available motor input on the side of injury or not and whether it is a condition which is going to progress, which is going to require further intervention or not. So usually congenital cases of facial palsy can be unilateral and in cases of bilateral like Mobius syndrome, both the sides have to be managed. So this is important to know because it helps us to decide what our available donor nerve is. Therefore, the options that we have for the smile reanimation procedures are whether we have an available facial nerve itself or we have to go in for another nerve. So facial nerve again will be divided into whether we can use the nerve on the ipsilateral side, that is the affected side, or we need to go into the contralateral, that is the normal unaffected side. So that is what the etiology is going to be a deciding factor for. So what happens if we do not have a facial nerve input? Then in those cases, the trigeminal nerve, which gives a branch to the masseter. So the nerve to the masseter is most commonly used. Even the hypoglossal nerve, which innervates the tongue musculature has been used. And in some cases, even the accessory nerve, that is the 11th nerve has been used. So now what happens when the nerve procedure cannot be done? That is when we have crossed our precious timing stage. In those cases, we have to do a muscle transfer. So the principle for the muscle transfer would be similar as in the case of an upper limb injury or in other cases where we have to replace the function as well. So the principles of one muscle, one function, maintaining the tension and the resting position all have to be taken care of. So what are the options that we have for facial nerve palsy where we need to use a muscle? So obviously we have two techniques, one is the FFMT, that is the free functional muscle transfer, which is the most valued procedure. And in certain cases where that is not possible, if the patient is not a good candidate for the same, then we can go in for a pedicle muscle transfer. So we are going to discuss all these procedures in detail in the following videos. But the most important thing you have to remember when you are trying to recreate the smile, that is for the smile reanimation procedures, our principles are that the smile should be spontaneous and symmetrical. Those are the two main goals that we are aiming for. So let's see in the other videos how we can manage those.